and we're live so welcome to a special tuesday edition of the honor club podcast i'm your first co-host rgx i revealed my face last week so i'll hand you over to rate wrestle it's his turn hello Again, I'm Rhett Russell, I'm the leader of the Honor Club, and yeah, this is the face reveal you all wanted. Um, so, moving on straight away, straight to Frozzy. Hello everyone, Frozzy here. Canadian champion in the FPL, and uh, carrying these guys single-handedly on my back most weeks. There we go. <laughs> Rate space. <laughs> and that oh. tells a story. Yeah. <laughs> right in the bin. Yeah, as always. Yeah, it's gone all right at the moment. It's it's, it's been worse, <laughs> you know. Uh, I've yeah. climbed out the bin. McKennedy's in the bin. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> so he's single-handedly lifting you out of that bin there, Rate. At least we're all on the page that I'm in the bin. That's all yeah. that matters. We're lifting you out. We're getting there. Yeah. We're like a well-oiled machine are trying to lift you out of the bin. Even though I'm the leader, but we'll forget about that part of the arc. <laughs> 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 So the reason we are recording tonight is obviously it's a very busy WrestleMania week coming up uh, with uh, the WrestleMania Raw last night, WrestleMania Smackdown, or just to go home shows, why they have to call them WrestleMania Raw, WrestleMania Smackdown, don't know. Uh, and of course we've got night one and night two, stand and deliver, all of that over the next five days essentially. So we've taken the executive decision after feedback from our, our loyal listenership that we'll split the show. Uh, we'll cover WWE on this show and later in the week if possible we'll do a quick rundown of AEW. It would just be a brief one if we do manage to get it out, just covering Dynamite and quickly running over Rampage as well and any AEW specific news. So, without further ado, we'll cover the kind of main uh, WWE news this week. So, da, 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 news. <laughs> Keeping the production quality high as always. So, high for the cameras now, so. So, obviously, uh, a few days ago now, uh, Triple H was on uh, the Stephen A. Smith show uh, on uh, ESPN. Uh, basically just giving us all an update on his health uh, and at that interview Triple H confirmed that he has now retired from in-ring action uh, we all all we knew at the time uh, was he'd suffered some cardiac event and he was getting better turns out he had a viral pneumonia which then developed into heart failure uh, to the point he's even got a, a, a defibrillator to restart his heart if it cuts out on him. So needless to say, that's not conducive with the cardio you need to be in the ring. Uh, the last thing we want is some like horrible fate befalling him, uh, doing a masawa. Like we just don't want that. So what we want to do is just to run over uh, our favorite memories of Triple H, uh, career highlights, favorite match. To do a little kind of mini tribute to the guy's career. Uh, so, which one of you would like to go first? Uh, let us know your favourite match, first memory, and your favourite uh, moment, kind of feud, whatever. Well, right. If we're going to go down that angle, yeah. Um, <laughs> Triple H is one of them legends that, like, you had people at Austin when I first started, but they kind of disappeared. The Rock disappeared, but Triple H has been. All of WWE since watched it. Uh, my favourite match, if I had to put on the spot, would be him versus Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam. I'm a massive Shawn Michaels fan, and just that whole story of like the betrayal of him coming back and Triple H basically doing him in. Uh, that match meant a lot to me, like the Young Sancho match. Oh, the, he's the one where he's wearing the jeans. jeans. Yeah, it was like the unsanctioned street fight. Um, but it was it was brutal as well. It was like it was a more than WWE street fight. You'd like it was proper brutal. Um, and then you thought, oh, it would be end. It will be ended, and it would be fine. But now he betrayed him again. <laughs> um, <laughs> led on to the run. But yeah, Triple H has always he's just been a brutal assassin. So like every match he's been in, 
Boyd. I, I, I wasn't that bad on the authority side of it as well, on the lighter side, and obviously he brought us NXT as well, the best part of NXT. He yeah. means a lot. Really does. A bit yourself, Rosie. It was um, Cactus Jack, that whole feud that went from Rumble then to No Way Out the Hell in a Cell, but that street fight at the Rumble was, was insane, and that put him on the level that he needed to be on to be able to be like a face of the company as well. That's what got him over, and that's what Cactus Chat was good at. He got people there, and I think if you asked Triple H, he'd say, "Yeah, that that was the time where I knew I'd made it." And it's just matches like that. He had good matches. He had these matches with Taker at Mania. They were both great, but it's just that one for me just stands out because it was the elevation of Triple H. Yeah, right, and. Obviously, having watched the documentaries and the interviews that they both done after, like both men have a lot to say for that match in their careers. Or Mick Foley showing that he could still hang at main event with all his body had been through, and Triple H for letting him show that kind of sadistic side that had been missing from his character. Yeah, he'd done like you know, the usual heel antics up to that point, but this was him showing his true mean streak. And added that edge to him. It really helped a lot in his career. Uh, for me, like my favourite memory is that MSG return after he came back from the first major quad tier. That now he was going to be in the Rumble. There's very few people in this earth that could rock up in double denim and still appear like a badass. Uh, and the crowd reaction he got as well was just out of this world. Uh, and as far as favourite match, I'd say the end of an era, uh, Hell in a Cell match, uh, WrestleMania 29, I think, 29. Uh, it right. ended with the three of them on the ramp, absolutely spent, doing a kind of mini curtain call. And I'm sure if all three men had their way to like, go back and look at it now, that would have been where they had ended their career. Yeah. Uh... A few matches afterwards for Michaels and Deitch. Uh, still had some decent matches afterwards. Crown Jewel didn't happen, though. We, we ignore that in the, the timeline. Mm-hmm. Go, going back to that it. comeback, though, how good was that video package for him? It was you too beautiful day, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And it was just like, they've always been good at video packages, and I always like, they're the ones that I remember, like, you too beautiful day, and then my way rock Austin. And they're just... Some of the stuff they can do is incredible, but they stand out. Yeah, absolutely. I, so, yeah, absolute legend. I know a lot of people will say, oh, he was only a main eventer because of Stephanie. But when you go back and watch, he was being put in tester main events right back at the tail end of 98 after DX was kind of fizzling and they were seeing what Triple H could do as a singles guy. And he was getting the reactions from the crowd. He was over. It's like, well, he was he was meant to win King of the Ring, wasn't he? And then the curtain call happened, and it all he got panned for it. Yeah, so obviously, mate, he is a proven Yeah, he had Ultimate Warrior as well. They were tr- he, he was trusted to vote the Ultimate Warrior, which <laughs> if anyone, yeah, you know, that's a, a mean task to have. So he's proven time and time again, long before the storyline with Stephanie even started, that he was a worthy main eventer. Obviously, he had the reign of terror in the early 2000s after that, but again, that's a part of his career that when we're doing a positive retrospective, we'll kind of cross over. <laughs> Any negatives, <laughs> anyone, to be fair. Unless anyone yeah, really isn't. wants to go in on the, the reign of terror of 0203. Nah, yeah, so I'm pretty good terrible. that he got he got injured and all the stuff happened when he was on the two man power trip with Austin. That'd have been yeah. interesting to see where that had gone. But yeah, yeah, that would have been right, absolutely incredible. Uh, and the fact he even finished that match, like that oh, was yeah. incredible. Like to literally get up and have your muscle roll up your leg, and then say to Chris Jericho, "No, no, still do your walls of Jericho on the announce table." <laughs> Like, what an absolute badass. <laughs> so, it, it will be missed uh, from the wrestling ring, but I'm, he said on the show that he's not exactly taking his foot off the gas. He 
he still plans to continue his work as an executive in WWE. What form that takes now that his NXT crew has been pretty much disintegrated, I don't know. Uh, but I'm sure everything will play out in due course. So uh, what we'll do is we'll start by covering the shows. And then after we've covered the shows, we'll go over what we think will happen. Obviously without giving away too much of our predictions. So that our, our opponents who may or may not be listening to the show try and uh, pick around it. But we'll discuss the matches on the card at the end. We'll kind of do our little preview. So Ray, if you would like to start with SmackDown. Yeah, um, I'll show you my, uh, my perfect setup, which is this notebook. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's going to be very brief this week because we've got so much to cover with WrestleMania and stuff. So I'll I'll mention stuff about the promos, but if like you want to put in, if there's anything you think's worth noting, it's fine. Um, so yeah, we'll start off with SmackDown as you said. Um, so it was just Lesnar, just a Lesnar typical open. He uh, just built the match again. Uh, nothing really major happened with it, if I can remember. No, I, I can't remember anything memorable from it. It was just, it's typical of the last few weeks, isn't it? Reigns or Lesnar come out, start the show, and it gets the match it's, over. That, yeah. It's just a build up to Mania. So that was that was that with that. And then uh, we had probably my match of the night for SmackDown was the opening match was Nakamura versus uh, Jimmy Uso. It was just a good quality match for yeah. what it was. Um, quarter stars. I've not written much notes about anything this week, I said, because we're doing the preview thing, so I'm trying to remember most stuff off the top of my head. But yeah, yeah. It, went up, it only went about eight minutes or so, but it was just a good quality back-and-forth match with Nakamura picking up the win against Uso, just to build towards the Mania match. Just a SmackDown match at the end of the day? Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, as I say, it's still uh, annoying to see how far Jey Uso has fallen from being the the right hand man and main event and so, but it was certainly a far better match than the one against Boogs the previous week. Uh, a bit of a because they're trying to protect Boogs as in having a long match though, aren't they? It's like in the tag team match, they he was only in to do the quick dark tag win. Uh, yeah, so that that was probably a two and a quarter stars was my favourite match of the show. Probably isn't a good sign, but we'll uh, get past that. Um, but yeah, so um, cage match. This is why I'm looking this way, but I've got two screens going. So if I keep looking at this <laughs> way, it's because I've got cage match up there. Um, so Gam Mombosia. Um, this was a WrestleMania preview match. It went over for it went on for about eight minutes and was really nothing special, pretty much. Yeah, but it was probably the most unspecial match, the best match in those. Uh, and then you had some more Drew McIntyre versus Corbin build up, which I was excited to see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was literally just more of the same, like Drew overcoming the, the, the heel shenanigans. Right. It's one of the ones they're trying, the McIntyre needs a match, but this is not a match I want to see. No, they're trying to make us care, and I don't. <laughs> it's just it's too one sided of a match as well. Like, it's too, everything's been McIntyre except when the first part started where Corbin. Yeah. It took him out for two weeks. It's just been McIntyre over the whole thing. Which makes so, you yeah. think Corbin might be going over. Yeah. Pick that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we had uh, King Woods versus Ridge Holland. So Ridge Holland in three weeks has gone against the whole New Day. Uh, it was a classic match. It lasted 46 seconds with um, just a quick roll-up for Woods to win. Why this match happened? Like what with Kofi's match? If they're gonna, like, you're gonna get him beat Kofi, but then do a quick roll up King Woods coming back. Yeah, quite. Right. Yeah. What I found with this as well is the commentators are being very careful to go back to calling him Xavier Woods, even though mm-hmm. Titan Tron said like King Woods, and he still came out wearing the crown. Yeah. Uh, but the commentators are not calling him King Woods anymore. What? They probably saw it and went, wow, we've already said it now. We might as well continue calling him Xavier. <laughs> Maybe um, they carried over in Raw as well. Even pick up on that. Um, but yeah, so I rated that quarter. A quarter. <laughs> it, was, it was lucky. I rated Thingy Zero last week, that Dana Brooke match, but that was because it was the most stupid match I was in love. 
people playing in the middle of the ring before uh, actually having a match. Yeah. Uh, then there was some more Roman Lesnar build up, followed by some more Rousey and Charlotte build up. Then you had Ricochet. Then they had this. Um, it was the Intercontinental Championship like contenders matches. Yeah. So it was going to be Umberto versus Ricochet, but then they suddenly decided it was Ricochet versus Angel. Well, Angel, I called him Angel, went really Spanish then. Um, that was a matchup. Um, two and two, two minutes, ten seconds. Uh, Angel went over him. Ricochet, and it's, it's his second face of the company, supposedly. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I rated that one star. Yeah. Match. That's I, don't, match. I don't understand the Ricochet thing. Don't get it. We okay, had continue. We had the guy from two weeks ago who was complaining about Los Vasarios not being on the card to blame for this. <laughs> obviously, yeah. somebody in <laughs> WWE has been listening to him far too closely. You blame me though, because I mentioned the women's tag <laughs> matches, and then it started getting a bit better. And then I've mentioned this guy's comments. Is <laughs> on top. I see what I think about the women's tag matches, but uh, yeah, I think they've. Listening to you a bit too much and driven a bit too much into the ground ahead of the show. We've seen pretty much all we're going to see out of them. I don't know what other spots or whatever they're going to bring to the the main match, but every single variation of that I feel we've already seen <laughs> over the last few weeks of television matches. Smackdown, I think they're going to have the reverse match or the Raw match, surely. That's what's going to happen, isn't it? The yeah. that weren't in the match will have the Fatal 4 way problem. Um, Ricochet went over Angel uh, no he didn't, Angel went over Ricochet um, and then um, for some reason they have Umberto versus Ricochet I oh, know Ricochet called him out didn't I yeah uh, right a total face move saying, uh, calling out <laughs> someone after losing a match to come down and take, a, to, take the L as he called it uh, and yeah it didn't exactly go to plan for him on this either just made him look a little bit of a bitch. It was a better matchup, but it's still, it was just, like, I know why they're setting it up for the SmackDown match because, you know, the Intercontinental Championship can never be in on Mania ever again or any pay per view. Um, but yeah, it was just enough. It was better. Um, I put it as one and three quarter stars. Um, it looked a bit longer, but yeah, once again, it just buried Ricochet more and it just continued on Raw as we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so uh, this match was long enough. So I'm going to see if the Los Lotharios guy was on here. Or he's given it. I went in on the match. I think he's um, pushing someone else now. <laughs> um, so we'll find out. But yeah, the uh, Left 99 said, Paul Ricochet, in terms of in the Continental Championship match bookings, I don't think it exists a more useless championship than the him right now. Losing two matches in a row would make an 06 Rey Mysterio blush. Yeah. I'm in the loop with that. Yeah, obviously there's Rey Mysterio's World Heavyweight title reign after winning the Rumble and winning the title at WrestleMania. He proceeded to pretty much lose every single match until he dropped the belt a few months later. Like, it was absolutely crazy how badly booked he was as champion. That's how they always reference that as the meme whenever a champion looks like crap. Uh, I think that's a little bit harsh on Ricochet so far. But, yeah, it's not far off being that if they don't course correct soon. It was just, uh, it's not good for Ricochet, especially after they came out with the whole, is the second face on SmackDown. So we're going to bury him everywhere. Yeah, we'll make him a champion and then we'll make him look like shit. Um, so then uh, followed up with that was uh, Pat McAvee and Fury just having a weird chase. I can't remember if that was that the chase that ended up with Fury um, running into Mac and McMahon's office. Was that on? Spotify? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Lena versus Ripley versus Baszler versus Banks. It was a good match. There was some really good work from the ladies in this one, but yeah, I feel like they're giving away too much of what's going to be in the Mania match. Right. Pushing banks a lot, aren't they? Like, does it not just? I don't know. Like, 
I don't know if it's a swerve, though, because all you thought they might be one of the main chances of getting the title. I don't know if because they're pushing it that much, something's going to happen in the match. Yeah, it's, it's going to be one of, like, Naomi and Sasha or Legend Rhea. I can't see a heel team coming out of that with the belts. No, they, they mm-hmm. think so little of the belts. Who knows? It's definitely not going to be my top pot by any stretch. Uh, they keep mentioning about Naomi and Sasha Banks' history as well, so I can see it being that kind of exploding. Uh, I think mean? Liv and Rhea, to be honest. But... It could be a complete do I? mind melt, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, well, that means it's definitely not going to be my top pot. No. In a quarter, I, it was the same as the opening match, but I just put over the opening match because of the whole. Um, it just just suddenly finished the match, whereas the the Nakamura one was slightly better. Yes, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, it's fair. Uh, as you say, they all worked well together, but they're. Giving away too much, I think. It's it's going to be hard to watch you thinking what they're going to do, as you said. Um, so that was the main event. Um, it's a cage match as well. I'm just going to go for someone I've not actually mentioned. Rocky Seven, the commercial break, and Confusing Star pampered this a lot, but at least Sasha won. And the eight women tag should be good, but I still wonder about the WrestleMania's match. It is what it is with that. Yeah, pretty much mirrors our sentiments on it. it and um, SmackDown ended with um, some more Roman and Brock uh, build up, um, and I, which I can't remember why I wrote it here, but Lesnar smash. It's because like uh, every time they were cutting to him, he was like breaking something. So when he first came into uh, Roman's uh, locker room, he like put his feet up in the yeah. table, smashed the table. Picked up the uh, champagne that was there, launched that across the room. <laughs> it was just every time the camera cut to him, he was breaking something else. Yeah, he, he smashed the car up at the end, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, it's not my ash, that's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. There we go. That's that's my review of SmackDown. That's all it needed to be. That's, that's pretty much what they gave us. <laughs> yeah, it's an absolute plate spinning show. Like all the, the main card for SmackDown's been booked. It's just further the feuds without actually doing anything meaningful to like yeah. drive up the tension. Because that, that's the worst thing. Like obviously you've got the Intercontinental Championship match, which will take away from Mania because that's not going to be anywhere near Mania. But I don't know what they're going to do with other matches and like, unless Rich Holland fights all, like, a handicap match with the New Day for some reason. Just because every other... Well, Hopefully they get Butch involved at some point. <laughs> All Just on, because he's not at WrestleMania, is he? As we'll go through that. No. Yeah, he is not like booked in that match. He's to be at ringside for them, apparently. Uh, but yeah, so that was SmackDown, and then Raw happened. Uh, Raw- did indeed. Tough watch. Like, oh, was it was fine. It was, it was just more build up. Match wise, my God. Yeah. School right. Raw. Yeah, right. This was literally a plate spinner. But this is supposed to be the go home show, the biggest show of the year. Nothing massively dramatic happened. Right. We all know where everything's going, like story wise. Absolutely nothing in the show drove up the tension. I mean, old school Raw, because I've been watching them in order as well, and literally every match was a squash match. Like, every match within the first... If you put all the matches, you probably could fit them in the first 20 minutes of the show and have an hour and a half of just random shite, which is yeah. what pretty much happened. Um, but yeah, um, my description of Raw is even less than SmackDown, and it's a three-hour show. <laughs> Um, so I had uh, Brock Lesnar's having fun, which he, he genuinely looked like he was having fun at the start of Raw. Yeah, like he was playing I, at the, yeah. The promo was really rambly, 
but the crowd interaction because I sold it, even though I didn't really see anything. <laughs> No, he, he said that though, didn't he? When he said like, "Welcome to Monday Night Raw," and he was like, "No, that sounds awful," and he meant it because he did. <laughs> um, it was just it, I liked how they played on the watch chant as well because obviously they, he he was trying to joke off the watch chant, but Roman Reigns was being the proper heel, going, "You know, I'll beat the crap out of all of you." <laughs> um, but yeah, so we just seemed to be having fun, and then we had uh, Rey Mysterio versus The Miz. Uh, with Luke. is that what they called him? Which Lucha Logan won it, yeah. I think that was just yeah. by the way, he's wearing a mask. I don't think he's going to be masked up on WrestleMania. He's going to be, well, he could be knowing wrestling. Like, they could uh, get both Miz and him in masks for the banter. Um, or Don because they shouldn't match. There's a lot of respect thing. And then he turns, or he doesn't turn. Um, but yeah, um, it was just a quick. Oh, you don't remember it being five minutes long, I'm going to be honest. I just remember. Yeah finish yeah it was just the kind of standard like Rey Mysterio TV match now where there's a bit of cheating shenanigans then the kind of the heel beat down then Ray fires up flippy flippy they then they did the, the spot later on where they managed to rip the mask off of Logan Paul uh, get his mask back it was such a huge big thing for him. They just turned up this week in a mask anyway. Like, I'll just wear one of my 78 other masks that I've got. I was really hoping he'd come out in the towel with the leg out. <laughs> <laughs> Wrapped around with just two eye slits. Yeah. Or, do, or do the Taz cosplay. Yeah. Oh, that'd be mint. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I right, I didn't enjoy this match at all. It was just I rated it off a star. Like it was just there. It's been a problem uh, with a lot of the the Logan Paul stuff. Is it's all just a vehicle to make us all point and laugh at Logan Paul. What's worrying is what's annoying is Logan Paul's actually an athlete. Like he's he's boxing and stuff. Like he's a big guy. He probably could do some decent enough work, but he's just not being built. Unless they're going to do what they did with McAvee and you don't think he's going to be good and then suddenly he's going to start doing 15 backflips. Canadian destroyers and stuff like that. Um, I haven't seen much of that. I'll be but honest. Yeah, so, um, so we've got Panned on Cage Match. Um, let me find a terrible one. Um, Akaro 1-4-3. One, four, one, four, one of the worst matches I've seen with Mysterio Wrestling. Most drama and misfired action, dull interference and lame finish. We had about two minutes of action because of the break. The commentary was bi- biased and stupid. Um, that's why it didn't seem long. I forgot they would have put a break in this as well. A five minute match and a break in. Yeah. Um, it was just there. Um, then the best part of Raw, which has been the best part of Raw for the last few weeks, is Seth Rollins. And I love this whole Seth Rollins Vince McMahon interaction. I'm happy to speak about this. Uh, it was just fun. Seth is mental. Like, as in, like, he's maniacal. Like, he's gone. Old Joker. Um, just see him everywhere walking around going, You're not Vince. And then walking in like that. <laughs> That's and then the something whole... else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the whole look, uh, Vince just literally turning around and going, You can just ask me. And he was going, You just need to ask him. <laughs> yeah. And then him on the table. Oh, it, was, it was just a good section. This is probably the best part of Vince I've seen in a while as well. He didn't seem goggly as hell. Do you know when yeah. you feel like you need the words underneath? So at the end, <laughs> like, I had to so... rewatch his last sentence about two or three times to work out what he'd actually said. What did but, he say? So when he was saying, I'll be an opponent of my choosing, uh, and this person is a new... Like, I don't know if he was meant to say a new signing, or new star, but he just kind of rambled off of this person is a noose. I could uh, have said noose. Uh, there any wrestlers that used to carry nooses? <laughs> they're going to hang Zeth Rollins. Is what they're going to do? Oh god! Oh, god. Bring, oh, the only person I could think of was Big Boss Man, but I feel bad. <laughs> or they're um, sitting out Chef Dog and Midnight Rider. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> sort of happy times where people are not getting hung. Um, <laughs> uh, then we had my favourite match of the night. Omos. The Broken Raiders. 
two on handicap match. I thought, oh, you know what? They're going to show Romar says he can get battered a bit because these are two big goals. They even put they even put the Viking Raiders over and were like they've won titles all over the like world and everything like that. And then that happened. Look, I blinked and I looked and he was yeah. outside the ring and I was like, they're counting him out. Oh, he's going to get now. They've counted him out. What's hilarious oh. is the Raiders actually have a, a, a victory over Omos. If you remember, he was Tazawa's giant ninja back in the pandemic here. <laughs> so by, they've already got a victory over him in an eight-man tag, but we'll not talk about that. <laughs> what he is, you know, he had to beat them down to get his victory back. <laughs> Yeah, um, I rated this a good old. I rated it a quarter. Yeah, it was low, but it was just one thing. It wasn't just a clothesline that took him out. Like, celebrated tag team wrestler, won titles all over the world. Uh, legit badass. Like, does martial arts and all the rest of it, and he gets one clothesline, rolls out the ring, and can't get back in. Spot would have been is if they did. Like, obviously, I would pay Eric a lot more for this bump for just this one thing. Do the body slam out the ring. That uh, bump, yeah. At least it looks cool. Not just so you got clothes lined and uh, that happened. Um, even yeah. do it onto Ivar. Just do it onto Ivar. It's a bit safer. Um, and then it followed up by Roman Reigns is pissed. Oh, Angry good, during yes. his oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, you're skipping you're, you're over missing. The, thing, the most important part of that is Bobby Lashley's return. Oh, no, I didn't even write that down, yeah. Um, that, <laughs> I didn't even write that down. I that's like, that's like a legit match. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. Uh, but yeah, it, I, it's, I'm worried about the match because I'm worried about the small encounter they had. Yeah, it's so awkward made... as hell. We made this huge deal about him not even being knocked off his feet in over a year. Uh, which you think, right, okay, they'll build around that and they'll save that for Mania and that'll be the big point for the crowd to pop as they go to the finish of the match at WrestleMania. No, they just give it away in a shoulder block. The crowd is completely dead for it. There's no reaction to this thing they've allegedly been building for a year and a half of him finally being knocked off his feet. And don't get me wrong, Bobby got a huge reaction when he came out. He, he was over as a face right off the bat. But the fact that the crowd had no reaction to the Omos bump at all tells you everything. Because <laughs> it keeps happening. He's just like, Lashley's just going to batter him. Meant the other way around. Then I was, I was, I was sad no. for a second. Because <laughs> if he squashes Lashley, I'm just going to go give him the title, and I'll, I'll never watch wrestling again because he can't be defeated. <laughs> no, this will be his first loss, and we'll probably not see him again. The seas will be the, they'll, they'll be the skyscrapers. Dan's will end up in AEW in about four yeah. months. Sorry, being C. Vicious, it'll be Omos and Aziz, the skyscrapers. <laughs> but they'll be new in front of it because, you know, that makes everything different. New skyscrapers. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then after that, that I forgot, but I was testing you and I didn't forget it. Um, Roman's pissed. Um, he was just angry. Angry Roman. Just to build up. I think he, because um, the feud got a bit of light, he got a bit light. So I think they had to kind of get a bit more aggression back into it. Yeah. Just, become a bit more comical so that was pretty much why that happened um, and that was followed by the women's eight man tag yeah, yeah again just giving away more of the same of, of that match at Mania uh, and I've no doubt they'll do something on Smackdown as well which is another combination of this I thought this what? was Smackdown the amount of Smackdown superstars I saw you mentioned that in the chat then you know, it literally yeah. is a Smackdown show but, which is weird, unless they're going to put raw people on SmackDown this week. But who knows? Like, yeah, even Mike Cole was on commentary, man. He was just like, come on. I didn't even notice for the first bit, and then I saw there was four of them, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, this was pretty much just a, um, it lasted eight minutes or so, but it was just to get over the face team. So I think a heel team might win at Rania. Uh, honestly, this is, like, I'm just going to randomly pick at this match because I don't. <laughs> Happy out, yeah. 
top lock rear and uh, thingy, uh, FBU, you know, top lock. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'll rate that one and a quarter. Um, it was better than most of the matches on the show, which is had to say because it was a terrible show for match wise. Uh, for a build up for Mania, it's sad. Um, uh, on cage match, we'll go with Queros. Slow paced match with unnecessary drama between the Hill team. The match was also unnecessary to begin with. Clumsy action. Yeah. Endings of these quotes. It's just they add to it at the end. Clumsy yeah. action. Um, then no selling mania some more because yeah. it's con you can't have a, you, like in my mind I was going you, you know can you hint at Austin coming out but it's can't you have him at mania now you can't have him before can you yeah no perfect Austin did come down Austin Fury and he faced Ricochet do you like that like said uh, <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> The classic squash man, um, the Intercontinental Championship getting getting absolutely battered. I, yeah, it was ridiculous. One, one finisher and your dad. It's like, oh, all right, okay. Stand. Some champion. Yeah, to be fair, his TKO does look good, but yeah, the fact that Ricochet's just been done dirty this week, it really has. Yeah. yeah. Like, I like Austin Theory. I think he'll be good, but. That was unnecessary. Okay, it's one of the ones I just look up and it's happened again. And it's all it's all right. That what stars, um, but yeah, it just happened. And I started writing at this point. Um, we're all this is awful. I was just getting really annoyed with what I was watching. Um, and then followed by another squash match. Um, McIntyre versus Corbin and uh, Madcap Moss. This felt longer than it sh- it was. It was only a minute and 54 seconds, but they kept teasing the McIntyre-Corbin thing for a while. It felt a lot longer. And yeah, no uh, one was interested. I don't yeah. care. Um, so, yeah, half a star match with McIntyre going over again because, you know, he needs the wins before Mania. Yeah, the only thing I have of note about this is for so long when I was watching the match, I thought that Corbin's T-shirt says... Uh, let's get lunch as opposed to let's get lucky. I was trying to work out for the longest time why his t-shirt says let's get lunch. Show. Like I'm really staring really, at the show. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I wish sitting there saying let's get lunch. Yeah. I was extremely hungover this morning as well, trying to watch it and get my notes done, to be fair. That was just you like, imagining it at time what you wanted and it was lunch, not raw. <laughs> Um, and then it followed up with um, the best match of the show. Um, boy, that wasn't really hard to uh, have the best match of the show. Mm-hmm. RK Bro versus the Usos, um, which ended qualification. Oh, what happened? And then they, uh, that's what happened at the end of that. Um, but it was building up to be a good match. It was 16 minutes long, which really, I was really surprised they were giving so much time because I thought something was going to happen after this match because mm-hmm. they advertised it and then nothing happened. What happened to the one story Ronda Rousey uh, said on her Facebook stream that uh, when they announced the match someone put it in the comments she's like that can't be right I'm not booked that must be a mistake turns out yeah, somebody, even make it. Uh, turns out someone at WWE didn't even send her a plane ticket just instead of building it slightly and going you know what we can still do something we'll just pretend it didn't happen Yeah. did they mention Older on the show, Charlotte Blair. Yeah, or, did they uh, try and didn't think about it? Yeah, apparently the uh, advert, the advertisement on Twitter was pulled right away. Obviously, the source we saw it was in the servers, so somebody had screen grabbed it. Uh, yeah, well, I thought it was. I thought it was weird. I was like, well, I went on to WWE Square and it wasn't there, and I was like, oh, I wonder where that's come from. Yeah, so well, they when Susie realised their mistake, they pulled it. Obviously, we were wrapped. Yeah, so at the end of the show, I thought, oh, that might be the thing that'll be happening. It'll be, it'll be a tease of them having a tag team match and it'll just be another brawl, but yeah, I didn't know this. Um, but yeah, so RK Bros. Usos was decent. I rated it to just an average two and a half. It was better than everything on the show by Moles, but like it just it had the shit finish. Yeah. Just to sum up. And they were with that as well, which is a really random thing. Yeah, the Street Profits are obviously full heel. 
because uh, it wasn't even the Russos they went after, it was RK Bro. Like, they were properly the heels in that interaction. So, there we go, we've got a heel turn from the Street Profits for reasons. Yeah. That was raw. Um, I'll give you a... So, we'll go all with right, Chad Broder right. to end no. the <laughs> You keep missing stuff. <laughs> Well, obviously, the, the women's tag match didn't happen, but he still had a promo yeah. from uh, Bianca Belair uh, when she came out to uh, call out uh, Becky, Lynch. Becky Lynch card in her match at Mania. Uh, Becky then comes out know. looking absolutely manic, uh, pulls out a pair of scissors in an attempt to... Oh, shot you. <laughs> and oh, my God, he forgot this. <laughs> uh, attempt to cut Belair's hair, uh, but Belair like, manages to get her way out of it into a uh, KOD, and then she very kindly snips off her uh, split ends and makes sure she only cuts Becky's uh, extensions. So what I cut her actual hair, so she was very careful to do that. If you look at the length of hair she was cutting off, it was like that an expert on hair on an well, she was being very um, specific yeah like there was there was not a single cut that was more than an inch so she was either yeah. cutting extensions or just being really nice and getting her split ends for her <laughs> but blame my uh my zealous of not remembering this is because uh, you know I said, we said we would have a quick review so i didn't go detailed on the review and i just didn't care enough <laughs> that's what probably <laughs> happened um, but yeah, that happened halfway through the show, so I missed that by a long way, didn't I? Yeah, I, I, I feel like it was just before. Yeah, just it was before. before the tag match, I'm sure. Yeah. All I remember is Sasha Banks, uh, not Sasha Banks, uh, Bianca Blair comes out, like, no matter what mood she is. I think Jim Cornette, Jim Cornette mentioned this. It doesn't matter if she's angry, she's sad, if she's having a bad time. She's out waving, waving her hair with a smile on her face. Yeah, or she's angry. She needs to do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, did I miss anything else before we ruined me more and put me in the bin? No. Uh, hey, um, so the rating from <laughs> Kate Lynch. Chad Broger, this match was such a waste. It seemed like something that could be important. Why not just have another tag team face the Usos if you want them on Raw? Not to mention the actual in-ring felt pointless and like nothing happened. What was that, that guy? Was harsh. Uh, Chad Broder, so not Kroger. Oh, he said Chad, Chad Kroger. I was like, Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, so, I think uh, that might be Los Lotharios guy, if memory serves. It, yeah, you might be right, actually. He's moved on. His name was Jorge. Jorge, uh, thank you. Yeah. Right, fair enough. Um, but yeah, that was the end of my reviews. Well, uh... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Is that going to spin then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you feel like it quick minute, I'm going to go into www.com and pull up the the cards for the shows this weekend. So, Why, uh... play some elevator music just now for a second while I pull these up. WrestleMania! <laughs> I thought that would last longer, I thought you'd already be done. Uh... <laughs> so, do you want to run through uh, Stand and Deliver first, or will you just cover Mania right off the bat? Stand we'll do first. If we're going to cover it, we'll do that before Mania because that's how it's booked, isn't it? So, currently a four match card. Uh, so, it'll be very tight for our matches that are booked in the prediction leagues. We'll be heavily reliant on our bonus questions, I think. Uh, but the NXT Tag Team Triple Threat match of Imperium, who are the defending champions, against the Creed Brothers and MSK, who are still not over with the fans at all. Uh, but I tell a lie about it being a four-match card. WWE and their use of bold text. It's a six-match card, sorry. So I've got a both... cage match now, I thought that. Yeah, so you've also got LA Knight against Walter. I will call him Walter, not Clinton. Great Clint. match. Uh, but I can't wait to see LA well, Knight get his chest caved in. Uh, it's going to be think... it. I think there's a chance he could sneak it. All depends on who's going up to the main roster first. I think one of the two is going to be on Raw on Monday. That's my... I, can't I, know, I, that I think not... Raw's going to be built around VMAN, so I don't feel like any of them are going. I suppose, but you need someone for... Hours. 
He's just going to be like in the ring the full time, and there'll be people coming up to interact with him. So. <laughs> and we've got the Cody debut as well. Yeah, it will be hilarious if it's not Cody that turns up for the Seth Rollins match. It will be absolutely hilarious. Yeah, they've joked, didn't they? They're like Shane McMahon, which if that happens, I'm going to cry. Or the Undertaker for like a weird fighting segment. Uh, oh, you've also no. got uh, Tommaso Ciampa against uh, Tony Dangelo. Uh That's been built up quite well on on NXT 2.0. Uh, that should be a good match. I've not seen a lot of Tony D'Angelo's actual in ring work though. So, no, same. Uh, I'll be interested to see that. Uh, you've also got the North American Championship ladder match. Uh, there's three spots still open in that match. But the ones confirmed are your champion, of course, Carmelo Hayes, Santos Escobar, Solo Score, Grayson Waller, and then the final spot will be taken by one of three in a triple threat that is taking place on NXT tonight uh, between Cameron Grimes and two others, I can't remember. It's basically everyone that lost their, their qualifying matches. Uh, I, uh, I think um... that... Strong and uh, Grimes and Aikid. Aikid, aye. Uh, I think that one is either Champ Retains or Solo Sapua. Like, picks up the, the title. Uh, but really, that's another one that would not be my top lock by far. Like, multi man ladder matches can always go anyway. Never a clear winner in them. It's usually a bottom lock for me, no matter what. Unless it's blatantly obvious. Yeah, if it's certain, then yeah. But yeah, this will probably be a bottom lock for me as well. Uh, you've also got the NXT Women's Championship Fatal 4-Way uh, between Mandy Rose, who's the defending champion, against Cora Jade, Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray, both of who cashed in their dusty tag team, tag team classic trophy to get a singles Fatal 4 away match for the title. But again, we've drilled that one to death on my NXT review last week. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be Cora or KLR for me. I think Cora. I would absolutely love my, my hometown girl to come out and win that, uh, but I don't think she will. Uh, I think Cora it's going to well, be Cora Jade. Rose, because I don't want anyone to know what I'm picking. <laughs> Are we book the FBI book in the show? I didn't even think about it. It is happening, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah just because yeah. you're not in the card, Mr. Pre-show. Yeah, I'm just in the bin. <laughs> you know, the leader of other club. In the bin. Mr. Yeah. Pre-show. I think this is one of these um, open challenges that I know in a stare at the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Please! <laughs> Uh, need, to need, to, need to change your nickname in the in the server to Mr. P Show. Uh, and of oh, course you've got your <laughs> of course you get your main event of Dolph Ziggler and Broughton Breaker for the NXT Championship. I uh, I again last week I talked about uh, Dolph Ziggler. We could have ran that into the ground. I. Uh, I think this is bronze to get back unless he's going straight up to the main roster. I know he's had a couple of matches on there already. Uh, it all depends what they have planned for him. I think if you can work out what WWE are going to be doing with Braun, then you'll you'll know the winner of that match. Yeah, uh, I can see Ziggler retaining. I'm um, moving on to LA Knight next. That's what I can see happening because obviously they teased that in a couple of interactions on Raw. There'll be a shitstorm in the FBL Discord if that happens. Not if he turns up in Raw on Monday night and wins the title. True. We all about Ziggler. He's winning everywhere. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> so, right, yeah, that looks like a decent card. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even the 2.0 uh, takeovers have been really, really good. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen a takeover that wasn't enjoyable. But they do tend to over deliver on what you 
have expectations going in. Uh, so that's that one. So let me get WrestleMania up. I've already done it now. I'm not going to repeat my uh, my segue to that. <laughs> Where's WrestleMania? These as well. I don't know if they will show it on the thing. Uh, the actual day, what's on which day. Yeah, I've got one that does have what's on what day. Oh, that was good. You know, you're saying them out loud, I just look like I'm not paying attention, so I'm just going to stare at <laughs> so, This doesn't say uh, at the moment uh, which, uh, which night everything's going to be on, uh, but it does state the, uh, the Seth Rollins match against TBD uh, is going to be on the WrestleMania Saturday. Yeah. Uh, We've got uh, Pat McAfee against Austin Theory, uh, which is penciled in for the, the Saturday. Uh, Bobby Lashley against Omos, uh, which was announced on Raw there. Uh, your triple threat tag team match uh, is going to be Sunday. Uh, the Kingwoods and Kofi, uh, Kofi Kingston against Sheamus and Holland is Saturday. Uh, they've not stated what night the tag team Fatal 4 way is going to be on yet. The Women's Tag Team Championship. Sunday or morning? According to it, yes, Sunday, because you've got both the other women's matches on the Saturday. Right, okay. Uh, the Ray and Dominic against Miz and Logan Paul is going to be Saturday. Uh, the Johnny Knoxville Sami Zayn match on the Sunday. Uh, Edge and AJ Styles on the Sunday. Uh, Stone Cold on the Saturday for the KO show. Uh, so that's going to close that. Is. Either that or the uh, Raw Women's Championship match will be the one to close it. Yeah, the, either Saturday. way, there'll be one will open, one will close it, and it'll be them two. Uh, and that'll be closing it, yeah, because it's a big thing in Texas, and it? it's just going to be. Yeah. Obviously, as you've rightly said, both the women's singles titles are on the line on the Saturday. I really hope they get the main events lot if they're going to do one of the women's matches. To Belair and Becky, and not to uh, Ronda and Charlotte. Uh, it all depends what they see as being the bigger draw. Of course, your big main event on the Sunday to close out the WrestleMania weekend uh, of the title for title: Brock versus Roman. So, uh, will, will we go through each match uh, and see what we're? Thinking either way. Yeah. Sound. Um, the pre show Battle Royale wasn't there, but I don't know who's in that. If it's Friday, is. it's taking place. It's not in the pre show. They're doing it in uh, yeah, WrestleMania, WrestleMania Friday. Or WrestleMania SmackDown, sorry. <laughs> You're WrestleMania Moment on SmackDown. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's bad for the people that were in it. Who's, who's, who's in it? Uh, I think is going to lose Priest his title when they go in it. I'm sure Finn and Damien Priest are in it as well. Yeah, that was the <laughs> thing we were saying last week. Damien Priest wasn't on Raw. He wasn't on Raw again this week. I've got the people um, here if you want. Um, so it's uh, R-Truth, Shelton Benjamin, Robert Roode, Eric, Finn, Ulak, Tazawa, Ivar, Mahal, Alexander, Cruz, Shanky, Madcap Moss, Priest, Aziz, Mansoor, and Reggie. Sounds like the worst ro- battle royal I've ever seen. If Priest doesn't win that, Priest or Finn Balor, then there's something wrong. Yeah. Just sounds like someone's just clicked random on WWE 2K15, 2K20, and just everything's happened. <laughs> so yeah, after the main card has been done, they're just picking names at, at random of who's left and not been booked yet. I'm glad we haven't got to predict it, but it's that way. <laughs> It looks bad. 
Wait until you see it. Forget that now. <laughs> it's it's kind of like I can't even see. There's not. It's got to be Priest and Balor. Yeah, one of them are going to win it because I don't think you're going to get a build up of like a new star and SmackDown's battle royal. Yeah, yeah, maybe right, maybe right, you'll remember get to where one. the bar is set. Mojo Rawley is a previous battle royal winner. Matt Hardy oh, is a previous cool. battle royal winner. Don't get hyped. He stays hyped. <laughs> So let's That's just remember be, where that bar is, so it's not a yeah, career-defining moment. Yeah, I was going to say Cesaro won it, didn't he? Strowman won it. Did he Strowman win it? I feel like Strowman. Oh, no, did he win the... There Was that the great... I know he won the greatest run, but did he win the Andre the Giant? I cannot recall. I know Big Show did. Big Show did that Show pose won. next he... to the, the statue. He won the first one, didn't he, Big Show? I think so, either that it was Corbin. I can't remember which way around uh, it was. Been, it was Corbin's main roster debut. Yeah. Good grief. Let's move on to Mania now. I've ruined our lives with that SmackDown. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pat and Theory, I, I think, is more than likely going to be uh, Theory because Pat does really well and loses. Uh, but he, does, he doesn't need to win, does he? To be fair, though, in those occasions, though, he was the heel. He's coming at this as a face now. So he could get the, the shot win. It all depends whether we're going to have the, the big happy clappy mania or the heels win it all doom and gloom mania for night one. They can go I can't out. see. I can't see why I did have, like, Mr. McMahon's project, like, as of, what, four months, three months, something like that? Losing to a guy who wrestles every now and again. Yeah. As I say, like, it all depends on what they have. Uh, the plan, whether they want Pat doing any matches in future, but it's like a one-off exhibition. In those kind of cases, you generally want your your main roster guy who competes yeah. all the time to get the get the win, unless they're a joke character. Which they are trying to push theory poorly, yeah. but they're trying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, You're saying is we're all picking McAvee. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or course, every match. <laughs> of course, Bobby Lashley against Omos, which I believe will be Omos's last match in the main roster before he disappears to developmental and then gets released about 18 months from now. <laughs> I think it'll be pretty much a squash. He'll have him up for the, the Dominator Spear. He'll get out of that and Spear 1, 2, 3, it'll be over in about 90 seconds. And we'll never see yeah, Omos again. Isn't he Lashley? Is in Ash Lashley injured? Is that what the news was that he's going to be fighting injured? Uh, well, he is a genetic, like, absolute freak athlete, so he might have been able to recover from that quick enough. Uh, but obviously, he was pulled from the chamber match because of a, a shoulder injury. They would have normally kept him out for months, unless that's just how they reported it, so they could do this quick return. That's what they're not going to lie. As long as he gets rid of Omos, I'm fine. Yeah. I almost yeah. called him yeah. almost. Yeah. He's almost yeah, I feel like it's a project. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Project that will continue, I feel like. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I can see it happening that he beats Les- uh, Lashley, not Lesnar, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is never happening. <laughs> not a chance in hell. I genuinely think I'll be his last time match. Not- I genuinely think this will be the last time we see Omar. I hope so. Well, it'll be final proof that the experiment is over, didn't work, back to developmental, and he might appear in 18 months or get released. That's he'll go nah. after 24 7. That's, that's where he'll be. Or he'll Narrative. be Tazawa's ninja again. He'll break up the Dana Brooke and Reggie wedding. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, we've got the, the Raw Tag Team Champion uh, Triple Threat, uh, RK Bro versus Street Profits versus Alpha Academy. 
uh, Street Profits having just confirmed their heel turn on Raw there. I, I think they've demonstrated in their individual two-on-two -two matches with these combinations that it's going to be a good match regardless. Uh, but we've not seen enough of the Profits working heel to see how that dynamic's going to work. I think that's why they'll win. Because, <laughs> of course... Uh, Montez Ford's offense is primarily like flip and jumping get the crowd on sides. Yeah. How that translates to heel work, we'll, we'll soon see. Yeah. I, I think it's it's yeah, I, th I think what they'll do with the Montez Ford, they'll do the good old thing where he refuses to actually do anything flippy. You know, the, the old face heel thing where you know you can't do anything flippy if you're a heel I don't think that holds as true as it used to but certainly if they're trying to get over as a heel tag team then they need him going up the, the top rope and then deciding not and getting back down again uh, but of course we saw with AJ he was still coming off the top and doing springboard moves and he was still over as a heel so Maybe yeah, because he was cocky as Yeah, so maybe it doesn't matter as much anymore, but be interesting to see if uh, Montez Ford changes up his moveset at all, his ring style. Uh, then you've got the uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, uh, Usos versus Nakamura and Boots. Uh, so they've been very protective of Boots uh, and... Nakamura have got the win over uh, Bay on SmackDown. Uh, depending on what they do on SmackDown this week, obviously the faces have had the better of it the last couple of weeks, which indicates to me probably heel team going over. What do you guys think? I, I agree. I think they'll go over because I think they'll want the bloodline to keep all the belts. Yeah, that's what I think they're building towards it, yeah. Especially with it being on the day before, yeah, it'll, it would add a kind of wrinkle to it if they did lose the titles and then as the, the show's building on the Sunday. You have the yeah, there's pressure on Reigns. Yeah, so it could go that way. Uh, all depends. Uh, with it being on separate days, you've got that option open, so that is playing into my thoughts prediction wise as well. But having the pace team go over in various ways and get the better of them over the last couple of weeks usually indicates to me that the, the heel team's going to get it. Uh, next you've got uh, Drew McIntyre uh, versus Happy Corbin, which is absolute far and away my top lock. There's no chance. Yeah, it's, it's not even a secret. It's a key. You can't cover that up. <laughs> this may be like 30 seconds. I don't see like Randy Orton and The Fiend last year. Well, that's still a very sore subject. <laughs> a very, very sore subject. Yeah, this man knows. We wouldn't be here now. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yeah, let's not get Bad into that here. But I'll, I'll end up devolving into character chat if we, if we talk about this here. While we're on video and speaking in character chat, you shut yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I can see this being a very quick victory for, for Drew. I'm not even going to play the, oh, it could go the either way. Like, it's no, it's not. it's not. It's not going that way. Yeah, right. Uh, I think it's going to be faster. quick. Betting odds last I saw, uh, Drew was like 25 to 1 on to win. Yeah. So, uh, absolutely no chance that's going any other way, I don't think. No, we'll move on. Uh, then you've got New Day against uh, Sheamus and Ridge Holland. Uh, with Butch. With, with Butch. My uh, Butch. <laughs> ah, Butch. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, New Day or New Day, they're, they're always going to pull it out. Uh, if it was Pete Dunne in the match, sorry, Butch in the match, 
obviously to make him look strong. I would have thought that uh, the the Brit guys would be going over. I don't know why I'm referring to the Brit guys because Seamus isn't British. Uh, but you know what? I mean? <laughs> like the Peaky yeah. Blinders boys. Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, the Peaky Blinders boys would be going over if it was Rich and not Holland, but because uh, it's Rich Holland, I think it could go New Day. Yeah, I, I think New Day might say this. I'm going to go with, especially with that, it's a lot of good, good feel moment, isn't it, for the New Day to win? Yeah. But when you look at the rest of the card as well, we're thinking a few heels might go over. There's got to be something. Yeah, which brings me on to the uh, women's. Uh, but no, we'll go with what I think will be one of the closing moments uh, of the Saturday. Uh, Seth Rollins facing the opponent of uh, McMahon's choosing. Uh, whoever answers the challenge, I think he's going to win. Uh, it will be hilarious if it's not Cody Rhodes, though. Uh, Seth is the. the uh, Character is bulletproof. He doesn't need the victory at Mania. Like he can, he's still Seth freaking Rollins. Probably wins or loses. Uh, yeah, I agree. Well, I can't. I, I, whoever it is, Zeth's not winning. Yeah, but uh, it will be absolutely hilarious if it's not Cody. But I'd say about ninety eight percent certain that it is at this point. So if it's not Cody, then who? It's Shane. Oh. <laughs> Shane McMahon. So Vince McMahon going, Shane McMahon. Best in the world. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no thank you, is what I'll say to that. Uh, we've then got the Women's Tag Team uh, Championship match, the Fatal Four Way. Selena and Carmella, defending champions against uh, Sasha Banks and Naomi, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, and Shayna, uh, Shayna and Natalia. Uh, with what you're saying, like the amount of faces that are probably going over at this point, you could get a heel winner if it's not going to be Sasha. I can see it being uh, Baszler and Natalia possibly, but this is going to it could go either way, really, because they care that little about the belts themselves. I don't think they'll care too much about who's got them. If I'm quite honest. I could see something random happening, like somehow both two teams win the match at the same time and they both have half the belt. Tell random this tag team division is. And then they unify them that way into a singles title. Yeah, it'll just be like the women's singles tag team championship, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they could do a thing we we uh, we did with Team Hell no, where they're like, no, I'm the tag team champions. No, I'm the champions. <laughs> that, was, that was mint. <laughs> I'm going to Disneyland. Can I actually imagine Natalia and Shayna doing that? Like, yeah, it'd be funny. Uh, you then got uh, Ray and Dominic against Miz and Logan Paul. Miz does not win feuds. Right, what else can we say? <laughs> and this is all going to be designed to get the comedy moment of Logan Paul getting his comeuppance. Even though Logan Paul himself hasn't actually done much. Right. Yeah, it's one on one. It's a uh... massive Rey Mysterio fan, didn't he? Even though he stole his mask. But, I mean, I could see him turning. Yeah, I... Uh... If, it, if the turn doesn't happen here, I don't think it's gonna. I know they've wanted the, the Dom versus Ray match, but I've seen absolutely none of Dominic's own moveset. Absolutely everything Dominic does in that ring is a Ray Mysterio move. So I think if they're going to do any kind of split, he needs to start showing a bit more individuality first. Do something like the winner gets the freaking the six one nine. That we we can do matches like that. Yeah, but he still needs the rest of his moveset. <laughs> like literally everything he does <laughs> is either Eddie's or Ray's. Yeah, he's not got a single move of his own that the other two don't do. 
blowout. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I can see a split coming, but I think it's too soon at uh, WrestleMania to do it. Because it, it would be out of nowhere, really. It's not been built properly enough with any kind of dissension or teasing. Mm. And, uh, and as I say, I think this is just a. Like, everyone in WWE knows that Logan Paul's famous for being hated. Like, that he's not where he is because people love him. So they'll want. Two. They're banking on the fact that people are going to watch to uh, see him get his ass kicked. To be fair, he's taken, like, press wise, he's taken a nicer turn because I think everyone hates his brother more. Jake Paul because he's an absolute log. Like, Logan Paul's kind of went higher because he kind of distanced himself from Jake Paul. Yeah, he's a wet wipe. Jake Paul is. That's yeah, still, that's Jake Paul. Yeah, I mean, I'm not particularly oh, a fan of Logan, but it's if I had to choose, push one off a cliff, I know which one I'd choose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. That's that one. Obviously, you've got the Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn. Anything goes match. Not no disqualification. Anything goes. They're very <laughs> specific about that. Even on the, the advertised card, they have it in brackets. Anything goes match. Uh, we talked about this before. I think there's going to be some Jackass cast run ins. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. Can't wait. Actually, looking forward to this match oh, yeah. more than most. It's going to be quite funny. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've then got uh, Edge and AJ Styles. This is also a, another good match. It's not over. Yeah, right. going to be a good match. This is good classic written all over it. And the great thing about this, normally, like, prediction wise, I'd be worrying about the result of this, but. Genuinely, I love the fact I don't know who's going over. Yeah. In this one. Uh, Even the dying more, odds don't know. I'll be more attuned yeah. to like, the finish of the match as opposed to going, right, I think it's going to be him, and then getting annoyed every time there's a kick out or something. Yeah. No, I don't even right. care. I think the match will just be an absolute banger. Yeah. And I don't care who wins. I don't think it hurts either one to lose. Uh, then you've got Stone Cold oh, showing yeah. up in the Kevin Owens show. Uh, I think that's going to be a kind of brawl for the crowd. Uh, I think there'll be some playful banter beforehand. I don't think they're going to get right into fighting. Oh, it'd be a, be a waste if you didn't have Austin on the mic yeah. in Texas. Yeah, it's did you hear the rumour, though, about the... Yeah, did you hear the rumour that they've had him in Texas, like, Four days doing something as well. They're like they're filming stuff with him for like ten hours. I was listening to the Cornell podcast, but they yeah, this was just coming up in the Cornell press. So they're doing stuff pre-show with him for like ten hours. Oh, this is just media with and stuff. Him and Owens. So I don't, yeah, I don't know what's happening. If they're going to do something kind of like cinematic or something like that. This was here, but it'd be, it'd be a shame for the live crowd. Yeah, just I can't to see watch whatever's on there. Um, uh, and you've got your your main events, we're all so to speak, because obviously they're taking place on different nights. Uh, first of all, your Raw Women's Championship match, Becky Lynch, the defending champion against Bianca Belair. For me, this has been building to Belair winning since SummerSlam. Yeah. Uh, can't see any other result, and I think there'd be there'd be riots if she didn't win. Uh, it'd be a, a confirmation that WWE doesn't care about anyone that isn't a horseman uh, or horsewoman at that point. Yeah, uh, yeah I, th- I think it's Becky's time to lose now. It's, it's, can anyone remember the last time she lost? I know she had like ages out because she had a baby, but even before then, she hadn't lost in ages. Yeah. So, I think that's a clear Bianca win, uh, and it'll make a lot of people upset if she doesn't. Uh, You've got Charlotte Flair defending the Women's Championship against Ronda Rousey. Uh, I've not 
up until this point, I'll probably do it after we've got off here. I've not checked Ronda Rousey's contract status for this run. I've not done any kind of looking into it, whether she, how long she's signed back to the company for. Mm, I I'm not uh, not particularly interested in this match. Yeah, if she's signed for more than another six months at least, then I can see her getting the belt so that Charlotte can continue to win it back and get closer to her dad's record. Uh, and in order to do that, you need to lose it. And then take it back at SummerSlam. Yeah, as I say, it all depends on the uh, Rousey's contract length, I think. Which I'll look into it after, because I don't want to give away my thought process too much. <laughs> Do you think Ray, do you care for this match at all? Or? Yeah, I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. Like Rousey and Charlotte. I wasn't a big fan of Charlotte, which she gets bagged on in our league. Uh, but I like her. Um, she's good talent. She's the. I think it's they push her too much, but I, she's one of the better women. So that's why I like her. Um, but yeah, I can see Rousey winning. Can we honest? I don't know what her contract is, but if if she's staying after WrestleMania, she'll win. Uh, and finally, you've got uh, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, uh, title for title. Uh, I believe the bigger going into it for Roman, by the time he goes into WrestleMania, he'll be like over 700 days or coming close to it. Uh, as a uh, Universal Champion. So I think he if, if he's going to lose it, uh, at any point before facing the Rock next year, then it's gonna be here. But the question five hundred seventy six. Five hundred seventy six. So I'm a bit, a little yeah. bit off. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, when it gets past the year, it becomes a blur. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, well, I, uh, in that, that I can't see him losing. I, 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 get that. I get that reasoning, uh, but the question is, if you don't have him drop it to Lesnar here, who eventually takes the title off him? I told you, he's going to win against Lashley, and then he's going <laughs> to win the title. <laughs> they ride off into the sunset, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know who, who would beat him, but... I just don't think it's like it's not even like the title reign boring. Like I wouldn't be bored if Reigns beat Lesnar and carried on doing what he's doing now. So I just don't see the reason for taking it off him. Yeah, I, I, I get that. Uh, obviously, he's the biggest homegrown draw WWE have. Obviously, Brock Lesnar, although he was technically homegrown, I don't really class him as by him as a. A WWE product because he's made his name elsewhere and come back and stuff. Roman Reigns is the only one that's been with the company start to finish. And it forced them down our throats for a long time, but thank God it's paid off eventually. The guy is the biggest thing WWE's had in 10 years. Yeah, he's massive. You have to turn him heels for it to happen. But... Uh, so that one. All depends what we can possibly see down the line and whether Brock Lesnar's hanging about again. I think Lesnar will hang about. It's, I think he still enjoys it. He's making a lot of money. Why not? Yeah. I think we'll it's see a lot Brock as well. Again. I remember he's. Yeah. I think we'll see Brock again at SummerSlam. I think he'll probably take a wee bit of time off after Mania. Because this is yeah. the most shows he's done in a short period of time. And I've I was going to say, also, he's been around a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'd say since his 2003 run, like 2002, 2003 run, this is the most consecutive shows he's worked. Which also right. says to me that Roman's definitely winning. Yeah, I suppose, actually. <laughs> but I'm picking Brock. Just... Of course, of course. <laughs> so, that's the cards. Matches the top locks. 
So I believe uh, that covers all the shows uh, that were kind of preview. I think WrestleMania will be good this year. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of eye rolling though. I think it's going to be one of those kind of classic WrestleManias that you love throughout. I'm just going in with low expectations. There's only a couple of matches I'm really interested in. Same. Right, NGG, whatever night is going to be on, it's going to save that night. I think it's going to steal the show. Oh, right. that'll be the match of the weekend. I just hope they give it a decent amount of time and it doesn't get bumped for, for uh, another set. Oh, most unlikely. It's a good match. They won't do that after that kind of match. No. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we'll try and get together for AEW uh, later this week. Uh, I know our schedules are really busy, though. Uh, I have my, my anniversary mm. with my wife. If we do get anything Happy out Happy anniversary, of mate. Yeah, anniversary. Right, guys. I, I, should I should have planned better ahead so that when we started the podcast seven years after getting married, that would, my anniversary wouldn't line up on a Thursday. That's on yeah. me. I, I should have planned ahead known. on that. <laughs> uh, should have known I'm inevitable. That's what it is. I'm <laughs> bringing you in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all that's left for me to say is uh, we are on a club. Join us. Join us. Join us. And all that's <laughs> left for me to say is Bear Me Jesus is a bitch. I know. I know. <laughs> Remember, it's not the views. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Let's let's shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I've killed it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll sign off for now, guys. Uh, we will catch you when we see you. If not with the W reviews, then it'll be our bumper uh, WrestleMania review show. So. Thank you all for watching. Take care. See you later, guys.